All right, you see my two black marks there? I have them set up. Let me zoom this for you a little bit. But you see, I got a mark up here and a mark here. I got them lined up with this point on the crankshaft is what I did. So from there to there is what I'm talking about. This is the amount of time in the rotation of the crankshaft that fuel is transferring to the top of the cylinder, or I should say above the piston. That's how long. Now I want you to take note to the position of the crankshaft. See where it is. It's just that little bit that it's traveling along the bottom. So you'd think that because of the way this rotates and the way the transfers are or the transfers are placed, you'd think that it would be really throwing the fuel up the the transfer. But if you think about it, this is the only time that the transfers are open that it can push fuel anywhere. And what's happening is it's relying on the pressure in the crankcase to push it up. So it's what it's, what's happening is as the piston goes down, it's building pressure up inside here. And the moment those transfers open, it's like a, like think about a balloon popping. It pops and it push, pushes all that air right up the transfer. That's kind of how this works. I'm doing the best, I, my, my, the best I can to explain this, but that's all the amount of space we got during the rotation here to actually throw the fuel up above the piston. Now I want to show you the connecting rod here. I'm going to give you a side view and show you the connecting rod and we'll see how much of vertical movement actually is on the connecting rod. All right. All right. So here's our connecting rod where the, the piston connects. You can see where it's positioned. Okay. Now this would be the moment when the transfer first opens and we're going to rotate it the whole time around until the transfer closes. How much movement did you notice? Not much, is there? Now, <clears throat> there's a reason I wanted to explain this or, or talk about this. Um, that's because sometimes with these old saws, you'll get what's called an air leak. And what will happen is you'll lose pressure through the crankshaft seals. Um, you could lose pressure through your reeds, uh, through your intake gaskets, and your base gasket at your cylinder. It's because that pressure, instead of building that pressure and allowing that fuel to pop and go above the piston, it just it won't build it, so it's not going to push the fuel up above the piston. You just you, that pressure won't be there. Now it'll also affect you on vacuum. So as the cylinder is coming up, it's sucking fuel through the carburetor and into the bottom of the crankcase. But if your seals are leaking or any of those items are leaking, you won't be able to pull the correct volume of fuel into the crankcase, and it'll cause another lean issue. Um, now some common symptoms for this, let me think here, um, your RPMs will want to kind of rev out of control, like you won't be able to control it. Uh, your idle won't want to go down nice and low. Uh, you'll have to maintain a higher idle than you should. Um, 
it'll be kind of erratic. Uh, one moment it'll be low, another moment it'll be high. Um, but I just kind of wanted to mention this because not only does the crankcase receive vacuum pressure to suck air up through the engine, it'll get positive pressure in the crankcase whenever the piston's going down. So you, you receive both positive and negative pressure at every rotation. Now, crankshaft seals are most common. Um, I mean, it's it's a 40-year-old 40, 40 saw that I'm looking at here. And it, it is the, probably the most common issue. Uh, these old saws also have reeds, which it's also a common issue with reeds. But the reeds, usually when you have an issue with the reeds, the problem's not as severe. They, uh, you, you'll see it at uh, low RPM more with reeds, usually. Uh, you just won't be able to get it down to that final low point on the idle usually. You'll just have to maintain a slightly higher idle. Uh, it's because the leak is basically smaller. Now you could also have that same issue with crankshaft seals. Uh, you can have a small leak in your crankshaft seal. That is completely possible. Now the, these old saws have what they call a single lip seal. And this can cause you to have a leak at negative pressure and not at positive pressure. What I mean is you could be leaking air only whenever it's trying to suck fuel into the cylinder, but not leaking air whenever it's building pressure in the bottom of the crankcase. So the, the single lip seal is kind of like round, but the seal kind of comes in at an angle, you know? And the crankshaft, say the crankshaft's here and the seal's kind of coming in, or it's, you know what I mean, but the crankshaft's there and the seal's kind of coming in at an angle. So whenever that pressure hits it, it can cause that seal to, to work properly under pressure. But whenever it hits the vacuum, that because it's at that angle, it, it might want to open up on you just enough to let some air suck into the crankshaft or the end of the crankcase. Um, so you could end up with a leak at only one direction and not both. Now me personally, whenever I change crankshaft seals, I switch them all to double lip. Um, it gives me two lips of protection instead of just one. It's just, that's how I do it. But I, I really wanted to bring this up because it's common. Have an issue with running or I should say revving out of control. Um, and this is most likely your issue. So just a little pointer for those who uh, are new to this. That uh, you know, these old saws, a lot of times we need to replace the crankshaft seals. It's, it's a $20 repair. It is. You can usually do it for around 20 bucks sometimes less. Um, the seals usually cost both seals. You can usually get both seals for 15 or less and then you got shipping. Um, so just something for you to think about. I know I'm not the best at explaining things, but if you got any questions, just let me know. Uh, post a comment and myself or somebody who watches this channel will do our best to answer your questions but for now uh, thanks for your time and have a good night all right thank you later